All right, so I'm Sarah, and I want to start off with this quote, as cliche as it is, it really spoke to me about my journey. So, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And it really has, it really kind of scares me to think that at some point in my life I could have chosen to do something else and I couldn't have ended up where I am today, which is here. So just a little bit about me. Um, so I'm Sarah. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. I have had the great pleasure to transfer schools twice. <laughs> so I started off at Utah State University where I was a conservation and restoration ecology major. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> then I transferred to the University of Utah where I became a therapeutic recreation major. And I'm now transferring to BYU where they have a better program. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is the U of BYU are actually rivals, so I'm kind of the traitor. <laughs> um, therapeutic recreation is basically therapy through recreation. It's any form of recreation that can help somebody enhance their quality of life. What I want to do with that is I want to train service dogs. I have been volunteering with Guide Dogs for the Blind for about five years now. This summer I did an internship with them at their Oregon campus. And I want to be able to help people regain their independence. And this has just been a passion in my life. I love dogs. I love volunteering for dog shelters, be it in Utah or Thailand. It's just great. Um, another thing about me is I love to travel. Traveling is my life. Um, I just absolutely adore it. I can't get over it. I want to see everything that the world has to offer. I have many trips planned, and I can't wait. Another passion I have is the great outdoors. That's what I love so much about Utah, is you have everything from the greatest snow on earth to the red rocks to the mountains. And it's amazing. Um, my love for the outdoors has really translated into why I chose therapeutic recreation as a major, because if I wasn't training dogs, I know I would be doing wilderness therapy, which is reconnecting people with the wilderness and helping them develop a love for it to help them have better lives. Also with that, because I love the nature so much, I will do anything to protect it. And that leads into the Before Project Green Challenge. Um, before Project Green Challenge, um, I was really passionate about nature and preserving it, or at least I thought I was very passionate. I didn't know anything. Until I met all of these girls. But I was doing things I thought were great. I was trying to take the bus. Um, I was you know, using reusable items. Um, I was a big fan for not idling. In Utah, we have a really big inversion problem, which means just really bad air pollution. And I, was, I, I have asthma, and so it affects me really bad when we have these inversions in the winter. So clean air is a must for me. Um, and one day I was online and I stumbled upon this blog called Green as a Thistle and it was this lady who decided that she was going to make one green change every day for a year. And it also happened to be leap year, so it was an extra day. <laughs> and I worshipped her. I read every single post she did. She wrote a book, I bought it, I read it, loved it. She really inspired me to start my own green journey and she showed me all the ways that I could be going green that I had no idea about. And then Project Green Challenge came along. And I say 30 days of hardcore green challenges because it really was hardcore. <laughs> I feel like only the people who participated in it and the staff members can understand how hardcore it was, but it really was. Um, I found out about Project Green Challenge at a table at, at Whole Foods. And I was just really entranced with the idea that I could do a Go Green Challenge like my idol did. So I signed up. And oh my gosh, the first couple days, I almost died. I thought I had gone myself into the biggest mess of my life, and there's no way I was going to keep doing it. It was just way too hard. I was just being bombarded by information. But then, in all honesty, I won my first prize. <laughs> this may be worth sticking out. <laughs> really opened my eyes to it, and then I started learning so much more, and I learned so much. I learned way more than I've learned this semester at school. And I've taken that information, and I've put it into my life, and been making changes in my life. So, for example, one of the days, we had green clean as a theme. And at the beginning of the project, we were challenged to look at like our beauty supplies. 
and I talked about Crest toothpaste, and I was like, I could never give up Crest, you know, it's the best, best toothpaste ever, it tastes so good, I'm never going to give it up. Well, by the time Green King rolled around about halfway through the project, I was so overwhelmed by all the chemicals that surround us in our daily lives, that I kind of flipped. I grabbed a box, I went through my room and my bathroom, and I chucked everything in it that was conventional and just filled with these chemicals, and I thought I would never use those again. And I, you, I uh, bought sustainable alternatives that were eco and friendly and you know, didn't, weren't full of chemicals. And honestly, I don't miss my Crest toothpaste at all. You know, it, uh, it did take a little bit to it, but it, it's just so great and I can't imagine going back ever. Another thing that I never ever thought I'd be doing, sorry guys, um, <laughs> We learned about natural periods and all the chemicals that go into making our disposable um, sanitary pads and tampons and stuff like that and the colossal amount of waste that we generate because of this. And we were offered very, very amazing um, alternatives that don't have chemicals and plastic. But I decided I wanted to take it a step further and I decided to eliminate all disposables from my life. And so I experimented and I made my own, my own reusable pads. And I must say, I can't imagine ever going back. Sounds super weird, may make you uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's great and I highly encourage you all to try it. <laughs> Another thing, one day we had an e-waste drive, which we've heard about a couple times already. I contacted the Office of Sustainability at my school and they told me, oh that's great, but we actually already have one planned. And I said, okay, and they said, but we want you to help. And I said, that's great. So they made me the volunteer coordinator. I was in charge of getting 30 volunteers for the event. And it was a really big deal. We had, it was open to students of the University of Utah, which is over 30,000 students. It's open to the staff, it was open to community members. It was great. We were open for about six hours, and when I left, not even halfway through, we had filled at least 10 of those huge boxes. I'm still waiting to hear how much we got all together, but it was an amazing thing to see the community members join together and do this. It was also covered by our local news, which I thought was great. Okay, Project Green Challenge was very interesting because I am a shy person. We've heard from many other shy people, and Project Green Challenge really did help me just step out of my shell and do something different that I would have never done before. We were challenged to go interview people and talk to school officials and write letters. And all of those things were completely new to me. I'd never done that before. But I did it and I discovered that letter writing is actually super fun. And it's super great because you don't have to confront somebody. You can just send them a letter. It's so great. Um, another thing I did, just so unlike me, is on YouTube I recorded some songs that I made with my ukulele to do themes for days like this one was about a cradle to cradle invention I created about a candle. And I put it on YouTube, and this lovely lady over here decided to send it to ah. the president of Cradle to Cradle. And then she used it in a national fundraiser campaign. So that was great. <laughs> I was super embarrassed, but it was also very interesting because this was a situation I would have never been in without. Project Green Challenge, and it really made me realize, oh well, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, one thing about Project Green Challenge is I was hoping to be challenged, and I was challenged. I learned so much more than I would have ever, but I wanted to have to make a change in my life. And while Project Green Challenge was super amazing, I felt like I needed to do something more. So on my blog, I decided that every single day I would do an extra challenge, called it my bonus challenge. And I would challenge myself to make a change in my life. And some of the changes that I made were switch to organic milk, observe meatless Mondays, write letters to encourage green practices, stop lame driving, take action on issues I feel strongly about. And I have a huge list. 30, and it is great. And I plan to make many more. I actually have a ginormous list that I brainstormed throughout the whole channel, the whole week, month. And I'm working through it, and it is amazing to see the change that I'm making in my life. This is just one change that I saw come out of that. The first time I went away to college, this was how I packed. I used all these garbage bags, and I'm so embarrassed to show you guys this. 
But now I'm packing for college already because I'm moving in January. And I'm filling all of these reusable bags that I got as prizes. <laughs> and that's how I'm packing. But it's just great to see this kind of stuff happen. I have so many plans, as I've already mentioned, but some of them, um, they're not just about me. I plan to get involved at school, at my new school at BYU, and really help them down there. Utah kind of struggles. Um, Provo, which is where my new school is, they just barely um, made recycling available to every single household. But that does not include apartment complexes. And when I went down to BYU to interview students for a film that I was making for Project Green Challenge, every single student I talked to that lived off campus said, I wish we had recycling. And so I said, well, why don't we have recycling? So I'm working right now in the process of applying for grants to get money to um, create recycling programs at my apartment complex and hopefully other apartment complexes. And I'm really hopeful that this will work out because there's been a tremendous amount of support. Um, I also am going to work with the sustainability groups down there to help do BYU's first ever Green Week. And we just are going to also try to um, get healthier food options on campus. And my last little bit, the very, for the time I've sent in my very last submission to Project Green Challenge, a song popped into my head. And I'm going to, I'm not going to sing for you, don't worry. <laughs> but I'm going to quote in the wonderful words of Bon Jovi. Um, it's my life. It's now or never. I ain't going to live forever. I just want to live while I'm alive. And in all truth, you know, it is all of our lives. And if we want to live, we have to take responsibility for what we are doing. But not only that, we have to think of everybody else's lives. And if somebody isn't doing their part, that's okay, but we are going to change that. And we are going to think for the future. And I'm just so grateful to be here and see all these amazing young women and young men who are working to change everybody's lives. Thank you.